Hello booktube, I'm Jonathan and welcome to Words in Time. Now in today's video I'm going to be talking about The Forever War by Joe Holderman. Now this was published in 1974 and it won the Hugo, the Nebula and the Locus Awards. So this is definitely a heavy hitter of classic sci-fi, let's find out why. So the premise for The Forever War is that the story is set in the 1990s and humans are at war with an alien race called the Torrens. Now our main character, William Mandela, is conscripted into the military and we follow his tours of duty and his attempts to survive the war. Now however, each time he returns to Earth, many years have passed, it's many years in the future, due to the nature of time dilation. So he becomes more and more disconnected from his home world. Now, the story parallels Joe Holderman's real-life experiences from the Vietnam War, and I wanted to explore some of the ways that he conveys that. So, firstly, the war isn't non-stop action, okay? There's, there's training, there's waiting around, there's a lot of inter-troop and officer dynamics, and when the battles do happen, uh, they don't so much follow individual acts of heroism, uh, more often than not, the, the troops are, are just simply trying to survive. So this book is definitely not one that, that glorifies war. It's, it's a very grounded and heavy representation of combat. Now, uh, when Mandela returns from battle, uh, decades have passed on Earth, as I mentioned, and society has changed. So civilians don't really have this... Uh, a concrete understanding of the war. It's very theoretical to them because the, the fighting, the battles, are happening thousands of light years away. And in modern day society, which Mandela returns to, resources are scarce, uh, the globe is overpopulated, and uh, something kind of interesting that the government does to try and combat this is it actually encourages homosexuality and tries to uh, discourage reproduction. Uh, so this kind of creates uh, an interesting situation where Mandela kind of becomes an outsider uh, because he's heterosexual and this kind of flips a, a historic dynamic on its head. Uh, so the way that it was explored was something I wasn't expecting going into this book and if you're interested in those kind of uh, social topics uh, that could be an interesting aspect of the book for you. So as well as affecting Mandela's experiences when he returns to Earth, Time dilation also has a very interesting impact on the battles themselves because as these spaceships travel over incredible distances, uh, they are showing up uh, with technology that is potentially years out of date by the time they arrive, uh, depending on who left first and how long it took them to get there. So I wouldn't say that this is a hard sci-fi book, but the hard sci-fi elements that are in there, I think are done really well. I think they're explained well, and they definitely add a lot to the story. So another parallel that Holderman includes is how veterans are treated. And one example of this is that the troops are paid for their services, but when they return to Earth, they find out that that income puts them into a 90% tax bracket. So for example, if they were to be paid 400,000, they only get to keep 40,000. And this really annoyed me for two reasons. Firstly, that's no way to treat veterans for their service. And secondly, that's not really how tax brackets should work. You shouldn't be getting taxed a flat 90% tax rate on everything. Normally tax brackets will tax you progressively. So for example, you might get taxed 30% on the first 100, 50% on the second 100, 70% on the third 100, and then anything over that, 90%, not 90% on the whole thing. And of course, Joe Holderman can write whatever he wants. It's fictional, it's a book. Um, I just thought it was funny that he wrote something incredibly complex as time dilation and, and explained it in a very simple way, and then chose a tax bracket system, which is a common misconception of how tax brackets work. Uh, I've said tax brackets so many times, perhaps only the accountants are still watching this video, but they'll agree with me. Mandela shouldn't be getting taxed at 90% flat tax rate, that's not fair. So anyway, I know that's not really the point. The point was that these troops were definitely getting taken advantage of by their military contracts. So I've talked a bit about Mandela as our main character and he's definitely a character that I cared about and uh, I, I empathized with him. Um, I wouldn't say that he had a lot of personality, uh, but I would also say this isn't necessarily a story about Mandela as much as it is the story about a soldier in a war. 
and we happen to follow Mandela, but the events and experiences are reflector of, reflective of the nature of war and the experiences of many soldiers, uh, more so than just the character of Mandela. And another important character as well as Mandela is Mary Gay Potter. So she is a woman, a soldier that Mandela develops a relationship with and an aspect of their relationship that I found interesting was how their shared experiences connected them because a lot of civilians really couldn't relate to what they had gone through and while it's tough to fully contribute to a relationship while you're still processing your own trauma, that shared trauma is something that few other people could really understand. So overall, what are my thoughts on the Forever War? Well, while I might not have always found the plot or character work to be overly original or exciting or entertaining at all times, I think the deeper themes of how war affects individuals, relationships, societies was really well done. And I think this book also sticks the landing with an emotional payoff at the end. I think this is a book that I perhaps enjoyed more since finishing it, uh, reading about it and thinking about it than I did at the time. So what does that mean for my score? Well, I'm gonna give The Forever War an eight out of 10. I really enjoyed it. I, it might not be the most entertaining book I've read in the last year, but I think it's definitely one of the most thought provoking. So I also think this is actually a book that could benefit on a reread because when you're reading something for the first time, you're kind of excited to find out what happens next, which is not necessarily the main draw of this book. Uh, but I think on a reread, I'd be able to sit in the moment a bit more and just kind of appreciate that the subtle effects of after effects of what has happened and, and uh, what is going to happen as well. So who do I recommend it to? Well, if you are looking for a fast paced, action packed military sci-fi, this might not be what you're looking for. But if you look, enjoy a book with heavy themes that digs into some serious subject matter, then The Forever War might be able to land for you. So there you go, guys. Those are my thoughts on The Forever War. Have you read it? What are your thoughts? Uh, did you enjoy it more or less than I did? What were your, some of your main takeaways? And if you haven't read it, does it sound like it might be something for you? As always, I really appreciate you watching. If you did enjoy the video, and I hope you did, make sure to like and subscribe because as always, there's more sci-fi content coming soon.